Yes. 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 Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for this day. How you woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. We thank you now for all the your many, many blessings toward us. You've been good to us, Lord. You woke us up this morning. Lord, you allowed our family members to be with us. You kept the church family. We thank you now, God. We thank you for the life you've given us, the health and strength that we have. Nobody but you, God, has allowed us to reach this point. We praise you now, God, for your keeping power. We praise you, God, for your provisions. We praise you now, God, for your protection. Oh, God, we worship you now. We worship your holy name. Your righteous man. But there is none like you. You are a great God. And we love you today, God, because you loved us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for coming in our stead. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the wonderful gift of salvation. How you died on the cross. You got up on the third day. And because you did so, God, we can have life today. We can have life no more. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the provision of the cross. Not only, Lord, you have given us salvation, but I hear that comes through the cross. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your deliverance now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we love you now. We love your word. We love our name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We adore you. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. There is none like you. Nobody in this world compares to you. You are a great God. Hallelujah. 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 We come to see you, God, to seek your face. We seek you, God. Oh, Jesus. Just have your way now. Have your way in our souls. Have your way in us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. We thank you now for all you've done. We thank you, God, for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you've done. Hallelujah. 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 My soul loves you. My soul loves you. We love you now, God. We love your way. We love our will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. We thank you, God, for your many wonderful blessings. We thank you, God, for being here this evening. You come to this place again. You have allowed us, God, to come for the time of prayer. Lord, we're praying now. We are praying for this church. We are praying for the members of this church. We pray for the little of the battle. God, help us. We need your help, God. <clears throat> we need you, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are sick, I pray for their healing. Let your healing go forth. Touch now, Lord Jesus. Touch now, Lord. Bind the hand of sin. Make him take his hands off now. Lord, you know who they are. The many names that come to my mind. The 
many names that have been sent to us, Lord. Stretch forth your hand. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Sister Marilyn Laws. Raise her up, Lord. Strengthen her body. Jesus, you are able. You can, my God. I pray for Sister Yolanda Laws. Help her now, God. Even in the things that must come to pass. Oh, Jesus. There are so many others, Lord, who are not even members of the church that we've been praying for the healing. God, we pray for the healing of our own family members. God, stretch forth your hand to heal them, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I heal them. Jesus, I would deliver them. You told us in your word, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. And God, I believe your word. God, I trust you in the name of Jesus. We've seen your miracles. We have seen, Lord, a move of your spirit. We know you're able. Oh, Jesus. We'll look at you, God. We'll look at you that you will do just that. In the name of Jesus, save, Lord. Save our children. Save, Lord. Save in our families. I know, God, you won't force anybody to come to you. But God, I pray that you soften their hearts. I pray, God, Lord, that conviction come upon them. Let them hear your word, Lord. Let them be able to see the trouble they're in. Let the miracle of salvation take place. Lord, break habits on this evening. Destroy the your God. In the name of Jesus, bind Satan. For he is a deceiver. Bind him, Lord. He's at work on this evening. Help our people. Help, Lord, help. Help our young men. We continue to pray for them. Lord, they're in the streets. They enter some other things. We're losing too many of our black boys. I pray for deliverance. I pray, God, that you touch their mind, that you touch their hearts. Then I pray, God, that you would give us what to do. Help the church, Lord. Give us that anointing that we can launch out into the deep. Lord, that we can help these young men. And these young ladies, Lord, show us what to do, God. We need your wisdom, Lord, for the one that wins souls is wise. We need your wisdom, God, to help in this present day, this time of a crisis, Lord. Oh, God, we seek your anointing even in this prayer, for it is the anointed that makes the difference. Help us, God, that we will prepare ourselves, Lord, that we can receive your anointed. Help, Lord, help the church, Lord, that we will have the mind to fast and pray. Help us, God, that we will examine ourselves to see where we stand. Lord, we don't need anything there that's blocking the path of your spirit to work with us. So help every one of us, Lord. Oh, Jesus, that we surrender all, Lord. Those things, Lord, that are not pleasing to you. Those things, God, that would take us away from you. God, help us now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Just purge us, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost fall on us again. With fire, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Burn up everything that's not like you. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't want the wrong attitude. The wrong attitude deals, the wrong thoughts, but God help us, help us go higher, Lord, help us, God, that we can do a greater work for you, Lord, that we be effective in the ministry, hallelujah, 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 I want you to bless God, I want you to pour out your spirit in this place, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, I'm calling on you, God, for we can do nothing without you. The work is great. 
Lord, I can't do it by myself. I can't make it, Lord, without you. So help me, Lord. I need your help, God. I need you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Come on in, Lord. Come on in, Lord, and stir the people. Stir the minds of the people. Stir the hearts of the people. God, we need a stirring in his place. We need revival, of God. Revive us again. Sit on revival, Lord. Sit on your revival. Lord, renew us. Renew the saints here. Renew our minds. Renew our faith, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let a stirring happen. Lord, revive us. Send the revival, Lord. I'm not talking about just a series of series and that, but Lord, revival that will bring about a change, that will give us a new outlook. Oh, Jesus. Lord, we'll have a deeper relationship with you. My God, when the saints are on fire, Lord, they have an appetite for your word, an appetite for spiritual things. Lord, we're so involved in so many other things. My God, to many of us, Lord, we have no time left over. Oh, God, help us to realize what is important. Help us to understand that, God, you must be first in our lives. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch now, God. Touch the minds of the people. Touch the hearts of the people. God, we need an attitude, an attitude of prayer. Lord, we need an attitude. We need a mind to seek you, to seek you with a whole heart, to seek you, Lord, with all that we have. In the name of Jesus, oh, Jesus, just have your way, have your way, Lord, in our soul, have your way, Lord, in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, bind the enemy, bind the devil who wants to, oh, God, take advantage of your people. Lord, he has done all, done much damage with this pandemic, but find a spirit, a spirit of unfaithfulness, find it, Lord, a slowful spirit, thank you, God, help the church, Lord, help the church, Lord, help us, God, in the name of Jesus, take us to another level. In you, God, take a higher Lord. Help us to understand that this life that we know of now, that is going to end one day. Oh, my God, we must be ready when you come or call us. Lord, you're calling folks home. You're calling folks into judgment, into eternity. Help every one of us, Lord. We realize you're coming again. Help us, God, that we are prepared. Lord, that we have done the things that you have designed us to do. You have given all of us a calling. There's a calling on my life. Help me, Lord, to fulfill the calling that you have placed upon me. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder about you. You are a great God. You are wonderful. God, you are worthy. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. There is none like you. Oh, God, send the rain, Lord. Rain on us, God. Rain on our soul. Rain on me. Rain on this church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The saints need you. This is a time of trouble. It is a dark day. Dark clouds are here. But, oh, God, I know that the sun is yet shining. It is shining brightly. Help us to hold on to you, God, to hold on to your hand, your unchanging hand. 
my God, my God, my God, my God, we're the one among your people. Let us, oh God, at the mind to return to church. God, let us be stirred up again. Help us, Lord, help us. And we become excited about church again. In the name of Jesus, Lord, put the excitement back in here. The love of church, the hope for your word. We need a hope and a thirst, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A hope and a thirst, Lord. Oh, my God. Help us understand what is really important. God, I know that some of us have put other things ahead of you. Help us, God, that we look at ourselves, that we look at our situation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That was a crowd to you, did. That was a cry, yes. Yes to you, will. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. When somebody had to tell him, yes, Lord, we came here to pray, y'all. He had to tell him, yes, Lord. Why don't you put your mind? Oh, Jesus, for a moment. Put your mind on prayer for a moment. Tell him, yes, Lord. You can in your home, tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul said, yes. My soul said, yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, oh God, oh God, let them be the yes, Lord, down in our spirit. Yes, Lord, help us to surrender all, Lord. Help us, God, that we're fully committed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Why don't we have to tell him thank you? Come on, heaven, tell him thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We are praying, God. We are praying for this nation. America needs you. Yes, Lord. Turmoil is everywhere. Lord, there's a spirit of chaos. Oh, God. There's a spirit of violence that is in the land. Even a spirit of racism. Lord, it's everywhere. Help us, Lord. In this place, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch our leaders. Help them make the right decision, the right choices. Lord, there is this case that is before the Supreme Court. Let them make the right decision. God, I know your word is against abortions. Yes, Lord. Let them make the right decision. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we need you in this land, in our world, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, God. We pray for the world. We pray, God, for the folks in Ukraine and Russia. Lord, let this war cease. Lord, so many people have died on both sides of the conflict. Let these leaders, let them do what is right. Touch the Russian president. Touch his mind, Lord. Help him, Lord, to have a heart for the people. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know, Lord, we're living in the last days. I know, Lord, that certain things must happen. But, Lord, I pray that you spare the people. Spare, Lord. Spare the people. Spare, Lord. Spare the people here in America. In Greenville. In this Delta region. Oh, God. We need you now. 
Lord. Yes, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy on the people. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we adore you. Oh, God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. The praise that belongs to you. The honor is yours. Just have your way, God. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Come on, tell him, have your way, Lord. Come on, tell him, have your way. You can stand to your feet. As you're getting up, I want you to keep praying. Have your way, Lord. Lord, have your way. Jesus, have your way. Have your way, oh God. In our soul. In our life. God, work on wonder. In this prayer service. Work on wonder now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Come on, heaven, tell it, thank you. We thank you, God. We bless your name now. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. For there's none like you. You are a great God. God, you're wonderful. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of the praise. And we praise you now. And we thank the fire. Look on the down the I lay hands on the Lord. Strengthen his body. Oh, Jesus. You are a deliverer. God, let the healing take place. Don't let him, Lord. Don't let him have pain, Lord God, in the night. But let him rest, Lord. Look on his wife. Touch her down, God. God, you're able. You're able to heal. You're able to deliver. Stretch forth your hand. Your hand of deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I want you to bless them, God. Touch right now. Be every need. God, open our understanding. You, the Lord, for your will and your glory, God. Oh, God. You brought them a long way. You know, God. You know what she's gone through. I want you to help her, oh God. That she will serve you, God, right? to the best of her ability. Right? Thank you, God. Right? Come on, everybody, say it, thank you. Come on, I want y'all to pray for me. Right? Come on, just say it, thank you. Right? Come on, everybody. God, we bless your name. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. Touch right now. Touch right now. God, give a release. I speak peace here. I, oh, God. Oh, God. I, I speak peace. Yeah, I'm Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Work it out now. Work it out now. In the name of Jesus, you know God. You know all about him. You know our situation. We look to you, God. Our hope is in you. Lord, we trust you. We trust your word. Touch right now, God. Touch right now, God. You know everything, Lord. You see her situation. She's faithful, God. She's faithful to the duties of this church. Oh, God, I want you to bless her for us faithfulness. Hey, 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 I want you to bless her for us faithfulness. I pray, God, that you work out situations. Lord, that she's facing. That she's going through. Oh, God, work it out. You're able, God. Let us see the difference. Let us see a different, Lord. Lord, that she may give you the glory. That she give you the credit. Because you're just that kind of God. We love you, God. We love you, God. Hallelujah. I praise you. I praise you now, God. You're such an awesome God. You're such a good God. And we love you. We love your word. We love our will. Bless her, God. Bless her, Lord. Open, open, open the windows of heaven. And let the 
presence for all healing. Hey, 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 hey. You do a strength in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm looking at you, God. I'm looking at you. For you are a good God. There is none like you. Yes, 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 there's none like you. Oh, touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. God, I pray that you grant the Lord, that you grant the petition of prayer according to your will. God, oh God, look at it now. Look on my now. And let the blessings come forth. Help right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Look on the door and touch a God. Protect the God. Why she in the school? Keep her, oh God. As she grows up, help the Lord that she will look toward heaven. Yes, Lord. Lord, that she be your servant. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We praise your God. We bless your name. We give you glory. Yes, we do, Lord. I want you to bless her, God. I want you to touch her, Lord. Renew her, save God. Renew her, Lord. Bless her right now. For my soul spirit. God, the stress that's on the child, Lord. Help her now, God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, just have your way down, God, have your way down, just go down. You see everything. You know everything. You know our name. You know what we're going through. Lord, I pray. I pray for revival. To revive, Lord. To revive my soul. I pray, God, that you will touch again. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. Give us strength, Lord. Strength of the journey. Thank you, Jesus. Strength of the Strength of the body, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help her, God. Hold the job, Lord. Help her, God. What other things you must do. Lead and direct. God, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, we look at you. You are, Lord. You are strength. I have the same. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray. I need all the same you. I need all the same thing. This is a time of prayer. This is a time of deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to go home the same way. Oh, God. Thank you for victory. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for the breakthrough, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you say thank you? Come on, say it, say it. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm laying hands on everybody in here. And I want you to just begin to praise it. I want you to thank him for deliverance. I want you to thank him for the breakthrough. You might get a little warning in your body, but come on and let's take it for a moment. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. You are wonderful. You are worthy. You are worthy. You worthy, you worthy the glory. We praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you. We thank you now. We bless your name. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give us just a minute or two. We're going to get reorganized for the Bible study. Just a minute or so. I want to say to you that are in the sanctuary, we're going to say the same thing next week. We're going to do a little bit better and get in the air channel in the day so we can deliver it for the that what it is now. Also, share so we will find 
So we will get it adjusted. The Lord said the same to have it uh, a little bit better the next time. All right. You make the people you too bad. You're gonna help me tonight. Okay. Right. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're gonna get started again. I just put it down here. Just started. You can start. You can see if you want to. I guess you that might. We thank God for his blessings, and we thank God for being here this evening. And last week, we had a good discussion. We did not quite finish what they had printed in the book. I think we got um, toward the end of that lesson. Let's go back to the lesson for just a minute. We, we won't be on it very long. Last week's lesson, or the lesson that we uh, worked on was the lesson that said promise. And we talked about what? We talked about the fact that in the Thessalonian church, the uh, members of that church were wondering what would become of their loved ones who had died in the Lord. They knew that the Lord Jesus was scheduled to return. But now here's the thing. I don't think that they fully understood. I know they did. They did not understand the rapture of the church. You see, I can imagine that Paul in his teaching, what, what did Paul, let me ask you a question. And you can say it out loud, just a, just a quick answer. I won't have to try to rush to bring the mic to you. But what, what did Paul base his teaching on? Did he have any books? You say he didn't have any books. That's what Sister Henry said. There you go. That's why I'm trying to get you to go. He did have the scriptures of the Old Testament. Now, there are many places in the Old Testament, particularly Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, Daniel, uh, I'm pretty sure Jeremiah, and some of the minor prophets that, that speak about the coming of the Lord. That is his second coming. But in terms of the rapture, I don't think the idea of the rapture is in the Old Testament at all. The rapture is really an event for the church. All right. And the church is actually a different body from the Jewish nation. Are you all following what I'm saying? So who's going to be caught up in air? The rapture. Where's the church? Do y'all y'all understand what I'm saying? So that would not probably be, you know, information you're going to find in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was dealing with the nation of Israel. And so in Paul's teaching, I can see Paul teaching and telling them about the coming of the Lord. And these persons in this church thought about my loved ones have died. Then what's going to happen there? Because we learned last week there were some false teachers that were teaching some things that were erroneous, basically probably said that they were lost or maybe they told them that they would not uh, be a part of the kingdom of God because they'd already died. You see, you got to remember, they were looking for the coming of the Lord in their time. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But here again, they did not understand the rapture. Jesus didn't teach a whole lot about the rapture. When he was here, he left us some clues. He left us some clues about the rapture, but he didn't, he didn't just do a lot of teaching. So, so God gave information to Paul, and Paul, because we know he wrote 
some things to the, the church at Thessalonica. He wrote some things to the Corinthian church and there are a few other places as well. So he had to let them know your loved ones who have died that were saved, they are going to what? Come out the grave one day. And then he, he said that those of us that remain alive, he said the Corinthian church, where he says it in this, this, this book, this epistle too, that we'll be called up together to do what? To meet him in the air. And Paul goes back and he warns them about the type of lifestyle that they ought to be living. How, they, how should they live? He told them some things that they need to go back and look at in particular. Let's see, can we go to that? Uh, that particular scripture that we discussed last week. Let me see, can I find it real quick? Y'all want to help me out? Where he gave those instructions about holy living. Some of y'all were here last week. I'm trying to glance over the lesson quickly. Well, we, we talked about some things, even type of lifestyle that people ought to live. I think what I'm doing, I think I'm kind of uh, thinking about the lesson before this one that leads into this lesson because he talked about the lifestyle of believers. That was in the previous lesson, how that as believers, they should not be indulged in sexual immorality. That was the lesson prior to this one. All right, let's go to page 60. This is the part that we did not get a whole lot of discussion, even though we have kind of discussed it anyway. So we're not gonna be here long. We're gonna go right into that next lesson. But look at page 60 where it says reunion. And I'll read these scriptures and then we, we ask somebody to read and get to the next lesson. First Thessalonians chapter four and verse 17 said, then we which are alive and remain should be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Now I was listening to a preacher uh, on the radio the other day. You know, there are some people who don't believe. You know, there are some people who don't believe in the rapture. There are some people who do not believe in the rapture. Then there are others who believe that the rapture would take place in the middle of the tribulation. Not, yes, in the middle of the tribulation period. But look at what Paul says here. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. How can we have comfort if we know we got to go through a part of the tribulation or the entire tribulation? Because the tribulation period is going to be what? It's going to be a very terrible time. So maybe I need to talk about the tribulation a little bit to connect these two lessons anyway. And before I do that, okay, I need to ask you all the question. I'm going to have the mic to come to you. Can anybody give me a quick chronological order of the end time events? Who want to try it? Come on, somebody. Nobody said that. I'm going to drop somebody in a minute. Give it a try, Sister Knight Jones. I, I got you in mind then, Sister Henry. Give it a try. Okay, come on, Sister uh, Taylor. Go, go to Sister Knight Jones. We did the rapture, tribulation, battle, battle of Armageddon, millennium period, the great white throne judgment, New Jerusalem, perfect age. All right. She had to look at a note, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's it. That that is that is correct. So in this lesson, we're dealing with basically the rapture. What is the rapture? That is a day. You can have a seat right for a minute. Tell you can have a seat for a minute. Uh, the rapture is the day that the Lord is going to come back from heaven. But he's not coming all the way to the earth. Where is he coming? He's going to stop where? He's going to stop in midair. 
And as Paul told us in the very first verse of this chapter, uh, we in First Thessalonians chapter 4 and 13, look what he said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those are the people who died in the Lord, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, this is what I'm trying to get to this last point, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So those saints who have died, where are they now? They're in heaven, right? but they are there in their spirit body, soul and spirit, because the body was put in the ground or, or some lost their seed, may have blown up, all right? Now, notice what Paul, what Paul said, that when he comes again, he said he's gonna bring with him those which, are, which were asleep in Jesus. That means that when he comes, the spirit man, soul and spirit, actually going to come to do what? To reunite with a physical body. Because those people who died, those bodies are going to come out the grave. That's going to be what? The resurrection. Is that correct? That resurrection is a glorified body. All right? And that body is going to get out the grave to meet the Lord in there, along with those who were yet alive. Any questions? That's the rapture. Sister Diane Jones told us after the rapture, what? The tribulation. How many years the tribulation? Seven years. Seven years. At the very end of the tribulation, you got the battle of Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon is when uh, Jesus is going to come the second time, the second coming, in the second coming, he's not going to stop at mid -air because that will be the rapture then. But he's going to do what? Come all the way to the earth. As a matter of fact, his feet are going to touch the mountains that are around Israel. And when his feet touch the mountains, the mountains are going to divide. It's, they're going to break into two. Okay, hold on. We need to bring the mic to you. Come on. We got a question. That's Sister Henry. Give, give her a chance because we want everybody to hear your Facebook and Zoom when we're asking these questions. Give us just a minute. She's just about there. All right. All right. My question is, I think you went over this last week. And I think, Speak up loud, sir. I think you went over it last week, and I also think uh, Elder Riley Sr. touched it, but I'm trying to be clear. What you just spoke of when he when Jesus come all the way to the earth, No, what you're talking about is in the book of Daniel and that stone that came out of the mountains, that was symbolic of the kingdom of God. So that's all symbolism there. But when Jesus actually come in the second coming, his feet, I'm trying to remember where that scripture is. I have to go back and find the scripture. His feet are actually going to touch the mountain and the mountain going to do this. As a matter of fact, when that mountain splits, it's going to allow fresh water to come from the Mediterranean Sea into the Dead Sea. Why is it called the Dead Sea? Because it has all this salt in it that nothing can live in the Dead Sea. It's so salty until if you jump into that, into that body of water, you, you couldn't even go under. You'll just be floating on top. That's how much salt is there. All right? And so Fresh water is going to come. And then now, when, when that happens, let me go and continue so we get to the next lesson. When that actually happens, guess what that's going to happen? Uh, Jesus is not going to stay there at Jerusalem. He's going to leave probably in air and head to the Battle of Armageddon, which is in the Valley of Medigo. Revelation tells you this. Medigo is outside of Nazareth. Nazareth is about 80 miles north of Jerusalem. That's where the battle of Armageddon is going to take place. What's going to happen there, the Bible lets us know that uh, that he's going to defeat those those armies that are being led by the Antichrist. The Antichrist 
the false prophet, are going to be thrown into the lake of fire right there. It's over them, not on them, but all those other nations that fought with him, that were on his side, that had the mark of the beast. Guess what? They won't have to go to the great white throne judgment. They're going to be thrown in the lake of fire right there. You, you have to study that in the book of Revelation to really see this. You see, presently what happened? When a person who is not saved dies, where do they go? They go to the compartment that we refer to as hell. Hell is actually a temporary holding facility, you, you might want to say, unto the great white throne judgment. Because the Bible lets us know in the book of Revelation that death and hell will cast where? Into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the eternal hell. False prophets and antichrists are not going to go to hell, but they're going to go directly to the lake of fire. They'll be the first ones that are there. Then all those people that were assisting him trying to get rid of Israel, they're going to go with him. After that, then you got the millennial period, okay? And then you're going to have what? You're going to have the great, great white throne judgment, and then you have the, of the perfect age, as she just stated. Okay, now, anybody have any questions before I leave that lesson to go to the other lesson? Anybody have any questions? Okay. We, we, we want the people on Facebook and Zoom to hear you. Okay, I think y'all heard her. What her question is, where is hell located? It is located beneath us. It is under the ground. Uh, it could be in the core of the earth. And that actually matches what scientists have termed. Because scientists tell us, and, and Sister Knight Jones, she's a scientist. She teaches science. The core of the earth is extremely hot extremely hot matter of fact am i right sister jones the the core of the earth is not even solid the the, the very core is not solid you got the different i forget like okay she says like plasma is what scientists have discovered but around that core you got molten lava i believe and you got some other uh levels that are around before you get to the you know the crust and where we stand on top uh, what I wanted to mention, that plasma that is in there, when volcanoes erupt, lava spews out. And that stuff, when it comes out, there's nothing that man knows that will stop it. El Paz said, Superintendent Albert Paz said years ago, he believed that volcanoes are nothing but outlets of hell. And, and that seemed to match when you look at the Bible and look at what scientists have found out true science, listen to this, true science uh, actually agrees with the Bible. True science does, okay. Other questions? Okay, let's go over to, we, 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 we're going over to session eight now. Session eight. Somebody might say, why have these kind of lessons? Let me make this statement real quick. We need to discuss eschatology. Eschatology is the doctrine of the last time. You know why? Eschatology used to be preached in the pulpit a lot more back in the 60s and 70s, 50s. Eschatology keeps the church on its toes. It reminds us that this life is going to end. But now in most ministries, you don't hear a whole lot about this. And you, you, you have more of what I call feel-good messages, more messages to encourage you. And, and yes, the Lord can give us messages at times to encourage the people, but you don't need that every Sunday. You need to be reminded as to what is going to come one day. And so this is important. It, it, it is the word of the Lord, and it, it is important. Session 8 or Lesson 8, the, the subject says returning. God holds all people accountable for their actions. I need a volunteer if you read this short introduction. 
pause if you don't mind. Who wants to read for me? You gonna read this rather? Come, come on, come on, tell. She's coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. Go ahead. The coach stepped away for a moment. As soon as he thought he was, as soon as they thought he was gone, a group took over and misbehavior reigned. Some stood in the corner out of fear for when the coach returned, but others went wild. To the surprise of the class, the coach was watching the whole time. He stepped back into the gym and everyone knew it was time to be held accountable for their actions. Some today might think that Jesus is absent and not aware of our actions. The reality is that he is aware and everyone will be held accountable when he returns. You all remember when you, when you were in school and speaking to the adults, the teacher left the room, the teacher give you a warning by not misbehaving while they were gone. Sometimes they would get another student Take names, y'all remember that? Because oh, yeah. you were gonna be held accountable for the way you acted while the teacher was away. I remember my mom talking about one of her teachers. Uh, he would leave the room and on purpose, he might go outside and be tiptoeing, look through the window and see who's talking. <laughs> and when he got back, everybody was talking, he whooped him. Sometimes he just went on and whooped the whole class. <laughs> So he, he was holding them accountable when he was not in the classroom. The idea of the introduction is Jesus went back to be with the Father. And what did he tell the disciples? I go away to prepare a place for you. But he told us that he was what? He was coming again. It may look like that he's not holding us accountable because we cannot see him physically. But he's holding us accountable and when he returns he's going to reward us for the things that we've done in his life i'm going to skip page seven before for time's sake it'll come back up in the lesson anyway this subject again we're looking at returning and let's find out what's going on on page 75 let's read we now for those that are don't that don't have books and you are on facebook and zoom and i forgot to set my phone up to see the Facebook feed. Will you do that for Mrs. Riley? Uh, we are now looking at First, first Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. I need a volunteer to read for me. Verses 1 through 3. Who wants to read for me? Sister Henry says she'll read. All right, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. This subtopic is warning issue. All right. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right. He told them, say, of the times and the seasons, so a particular time period. I have no need to write unto you. Verse two and three, for yourself no purpose, let the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. But when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. My question is verse verses two and three what is paul talking about there somebody tell me what you think paul is talking about here okay the mic is coming i don't think paul is talking about when jesus returns we cannot escape from what we have done He's going to hold us accountable for what we have done. We might think that he doesn't know because we don't see him or feel him in the present, but he knows what we're doing and we will be held accountable. 
I. Sister uh, Williams, I see you. Your eye. Come on, take the mic to her. Hold on. We want the people on Facebook and Zoom to hear you. When I was ready, I was thinking about um, this was the time of Jerusalem when um, they said the Antichrist, when they talked about uh, peace and safety, then the structure shall come of all them. I thought it, I thought it was talking about when um, Jerusalem was going to be escaping the Antichrist and they're going to be on the run because, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, He's going to be the man that wants to seek peace, but he's going to be chasing them. I'm not for sure. I'm just getting my thoughts up. All right. Deacon Law's got his hand up. Sister Riley, I need to look at something on my phone. I need to look at something on my phone. Uh, could this be Paul talking about uh, Jesus going to come back like a thief in the night? And if, if you ain't ready, all the structure gonna come and it'll be too late for the time to get ready. If it's similar to, the, to, to that. All right, I'm listening. <laughs> all right, come on, come on. I said, I would just like to ask what, what you're saying. Uh, he uses the analogies of the thief in the night because when a thief comes, we don't expect it. Uh, when a woman is in travail or when she's in labor, she doesn't always know exactly when it's going to be. So as Paul is telling, it, it doesn't, you know, I don't have to write unto you about the times or the seasons, but you need to know that the Lord, because when the Lord, I don't, none of us really know exactly when he's gonna come. He's given us some, uh, some signs of the second coming. However, we don't really know exactly when the rapture there are no two signs of the rapture. So, but we know that it precedes his second coming. So he's letting us know here that um that when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction is gonna come, even as like a woman, uh, a travail upon a woman with a child, and nobody is going to escape. So there are some of us who, you know, who feel like we have time, we have all the time in the world. But actually, the coming of the Lord is imminent. It can happen at any moment. There's nothing that has to be fulfilled for that time to come. And when he comes, he's going to catch some of us just like a thief in the night. What happens when a thief comes to your house at night? You're not prepared. You are asleep. He finds you at your most vulnerable uh, uh, condition or time. So we need to recognize that we don't know if I'm going to live to be old. I, we don't know if the Lord is going to wait until I get to be older or I, I get ready to get saved. He's going to come one day when we least expect. So we need to be ready. All right, Sister Wim, you want to say something? I, I, I'm, I'm listening to them and, you know, I'm like, I'm yeah, but then it's something about the day of the Lord. If I'm not mistaken, it meant something to me because I can't remember. Uh, you had told them when they say the day of the Lord, I cannot remember. I'm not for sure if it means Christ returning back because I also remember that time when the Antichrist is going, when they talk about peace and safety, they will be running. And like a woman prevailing, as this scripture was saying, it's like, because he's going to be, one's going to be on the top and they're going to be running and we'll want to them pray that their flight not on the seventh. I might be getting mixed up. I'm not for sure. So. You, you all know that Matthew yeah, and I, I, Luke. I, 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 that revelation for well, Matthew and Luke. All right, were you trying to say something? Okay, come here. She she wanted to say something. Then, then we'll see, can we, can we get it all together? All right. I thought, uh, I was just saying, um, I thought the uh, you can get saved at the last minute. Can you get saved at the last minute? Well, it's possible, but I wouldn't try it. <laughs> I wouldn't try it because one thing for sure, and I, I'm gonna see, can we get this a little cleared up here in a minute? One thing for sure, we don't know when. All right, and then the other we, the other thing you don't know when is when you may die. 
Now, my question is, because I heard several things, and I heard in that discussion elements of the rapture, and I heard elements of his second coming. So which one is Paul talking about here? The answer is not in your book. <laughs> So tonight, John said the rapture. How many y'all agree? How many y'all disagree? Look at this. I ain't see no hand. How many y'all don't know? Now, the way you talking, Sister Ryan, you talking about the rapture. That's your answer. I think Deacon uh, discussion was more on the rapture problem. Oh, all right. Well, missionary Sharon Wim was correct. Second comment. So, you no, know, she been to school over there in Mohead. <laughs> I'm gonna brag on her a bit. She was in my class over there too. She remembered a key thing that really helps you in this particular discussion in, in verse two. He said, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord, that is a phrase that you find in many of the books of prophecy of the Old Testament. Some of your, uh, your minor prophets may have used that phrase more than the major prophets. The day of the Lord refers to a period after the rapture. All right, after the rapture, going all the way through the millennia period. Notice something here. You, you know, in chapter four, we talked about the fact that the church there at Thessalonica didn't understand the rapture. They had all those questions, and Paul had to let them know, don't, in so many words, don't worry about those who, who are asleep or who died in the Lord. They're going to do what? They, they're going to rise about the ground. Remember that? And he said to comfort one another with these words. But when you get to to chapter five, notice the language he said, for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh. In other words, they did not understand or know about the rapture, but they did have some knowledge about what? The day of the Lord, which has to be different than the rapture. Y'all follow how I'm looking at that scripture? Because remember I asked the question earlier before we got to chapter five, did Paul have any books? Did he have anything that he could use as he was teaching the folk? Yes, he had uh, knowledge of those books that were written from where? From the Old Testament that talked about the day of the Lord, uh, which would be his second coming. Remember now, the Jews, I, I know most of the people that, at this church were Gentile, but there were a few Jews that were in there. And of course, we know that uh, Christianity grew out of Judaism. The Jews, remember, when Jesus was here, they kept asking the question over and over again, Lord, when are you going to restore the kingdom? So all of that is, is, is a part of the day of the Lord. And he's going to do it in the millennial period that comes after the tribulation. So they were well aware he's coming again. What they did know and what Paul was helping them out in chapter four was they didn't understand the rapture. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? So he says, for yourself, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He's talking about the time period after the rapture. And here he's got to be referring to more or less the tribulation period. And sister, uh, Webb, you're correct, because Jesus talked about the fact that when, and this is in, in, in St. Matthew tra chapter 24, you go back, let's go there. It, it'd be better if we go there and look at a couple of scriptures here. Uh, go, go everybody to St. Matthew 24, and let's begin with verse 15. St. Matthew, if you go there quickly, St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. Jesus said, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. 
whoso read it, let him understand. Now, what is he talk? What is he talking about there? Well, you need knowledge of Daniel chapter nine, verses twenty-four through about twenty-seven, I believe. Uh, in that chapter, uh, you find out that the Antichrist is going to make a covenant or a treaty with the Jews, with Israel for how long? Seven years. Daniel tells us that he's going to break that covenant in the middle of the week. The word week stands for seven years in that scripture. And what is he going to do? He's going to go into the temple. There's another scripture that's in 2 Thessalonians that let us know he's going to go in the temple and he's going to declare himself as God. But what he's going to do when he go in that temple, a future temple that's going to be built by the Jews, he's going to desecrate the temple. He's going to make it unclean according to the law of Moses. Because when they rebuild this temple, they're going to be operating under the law of Moses. So some theologians believe that he possibly would take a hog or a pig inside the temple, which is an unclean animal you know, according to the law of Moses, and, and he's going to make it abominable. That's what he's talking about here. But then let's let's look at verse 16. Then let them which be in, in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house. So this is what Sister William was just talking about. Not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and warn to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter neither on the Sabbath day. For then, verse 1 says, shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, not ever shall be. Now, he's, he's talking about this in the middle of the week or when the Antichrist breaks the treaty and uh, he calls the abomination of desolation that is making the temple unclean that he's also going to try his best to kill every Jew that is in Jerusalem. And what Jesus is telling them, that when they see this happen, you need to run to the mountains immediately. You need to leave. If you're on the housetop working, don't you come down the pack, get out quickly. You need to run. I pray that your flight don't be in the winter. On the Sabbath, woe to those that give suck to them to cheer, carrying little infants, because it's going to be difficult for them to run. And he said, pray that it won't be on Sabbath day, because if they operate operate under the law, many of them are going to be afraid to run, because they're going to be thinking about what Ten Commandments said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Am I making any sense here? Can you all see the picture here? Okay, come, come get it. I don't even see it popping up on here. So, Sister Lee, you say we see questions. I don't I see. I found that. out last time that both our phones don't even show the same thing. Won't you keep this mic on it with you? Just right. Keep this mic with you. All right, turn it on and you can read that question right quick. Is it after the rapture? And the mic is not on. Okay, read it again. So Patricia Barrett wants to know, so is it after the rapture and right before his second coming? Is it after the rapture? I think she got the answer because I see she says, oh, tribulation time. Okay, okay. That's your solve. If not, Sister Barrett, let us know. Okay. Now, notice that in our lesson two, uh, say for make sure say peace and safe, of course, that's gotta be tribulation. The first three and a half years, the Antichrist is going to deceive them into thinking everything is just lovely. Everything is good between us and you with this peace treaty. And they're going to think everything is good until he comes in there after the three and a half years. Matter of fact, if you read in, in, in it's the 12th, the 14th chapter of the book of Zechariah, Zechariah says that two thirds of Jerusalem is going to be destroyed, two thirds of the population. So uh, I know one time when I looked at that, I think the, the population of Jerusalem is larger now, but one time the, the, the population of Jerusalem was 600,000. Let's say it's 600,000, two thirds, that mean, would mean 400,000 people are going to be killed. If it's a million, 
two thirds of a million, which would be oh about what three hundred thirty? No, 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 not three hundred thirty. Uh, over six hundred thousand would be killed. All right. So it said, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction coming upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I got two scriptures I need to look at that ties in with this. Matthew 24 and 8. It said, all these things are the beginning of sorrow. Now, what, 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 did, what was Jesus talking about? Well, you, you're familiar with these scriptures. You shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Uh, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. Now, we talk about those signs being here now, and we do see those things. But guess what? When this happened in the tribulation period, and this is really what Jesus was really talking about, this is going to be worse, much worse, in the tribulation period. And what does Jesus say? All these things are the beginning of sorrow. The word sorrow comes from a Greek word that they really mean birth pains. Paul talked about what? As travailed upon a woman with child. Can anybody see this connection I'm trying to make here? Then let's go to Revelation chapter 12 for a moment. I want you to look at something here real quick. Because you see, you see all of this shaping up and all this connecting. If you go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon on her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now this woman is the nation of Israel. Verse 2. And she being with child cried, listen to this, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. All of this connects. And I know that the, 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 that she's pregnant here and she's about to deliver. And I know this is the 144,000 Jews, but, but you got to look at the 144,000 Jews are basically in that first half of the tribulation period. And once she has delivered that the great tribulation starts and it becomes, listen, second half of the tribulation becomes much worse. That's why it's called the Great Tribulation. It's known as Jacob's Trouble. It is, it is known as the worst time that this earth, this earth will ever witness. All right. I've thrown a lot at you in a little time. <laughs> All right. I need the mic. We got questions. Hold on. The mic is coming. She's doing a wonderful job, so give her a chance to get there. Yeah. It's all. Okay. Pastor, remember when Superintendent Ryder was, was telling us when Jesus come back for the battle of Armageddon that there's going to be a group of people coming with him? Remember? Uh, yes. Was, okay. We're, so the saints of into this generation, they're not coming with Jesus. But it's another group. What group are that that coming back with oh, Jesus? Oh, so you're not coming back with Jesus? No, remember, we, we asked him. I, I'm asking you, you're not yeah, coming, I'm coming back. Yeah, I'm coming back. I can't find nothing. I'm ready to see from then. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I remember he said that uh, it was another group was coming back with Jesus. And I thought that we were coming back too, but he was saying that God has another people coming back during this time also. I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm just picking at you. Oh, okay. I do want you to understand, yes, you will be coming back because Jude said, now, now we, we talking about, we talking about the second coming at the end of the tribulation period. Jude told us that he saw when the Lord returned with 10,000 of his saints. That's us. But what you're referring to, since she asked the question, let's go to it real quick. Joel. Joel chapter 2. And in Joel chapter 2, matter of fact, verse 1 gives that phrase I was taking, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. That's the last part of Joel chapter 2, verse 1. But verse 2 is what I'm trying to get to, and I, I, I may not be able to read all this for time's sake. It, Joel said, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds uh, and a thick darkness 
as the, the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, this is what you're talking about, a great people and a strong, there have not ever been the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burning. So this, the, this group of people, he said, what? A fire comes before them, a flame behind them, uh, the land is a, is a garden of Eden before them, but behind them, desolate wilderness. So when they come, they're going to be destroying some things. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so they shall run. Like the noise of chairs on the top of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubborn, as the strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pain, all Faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their rank. Neither shall they thrust one another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the, the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They should enter into the wilderness like a thief. That, that kind of sounds like something like Spider-Man almost. What, who are these people? This is a creation of God that we don't really know and think about. God has many creatures in his creation. There could have been cre creatures, and I, 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 I think I'm justified in saying this, there's some creatures that God has created even before he created earth because we believe that he created the angels before he created earth. So there are many creatures and, and this will be part of the armies because the scriptures refer to the armies of the Lord. Different groups that are gonna come back with him to stop the antichrist and the false prophet and those armies that are going to be fighting against Israel. So that's what you're referring to, Sister Williams. All right. Let's tie all this in. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And if y'all have questions, we can bring it up the next time because our time is just about out. I see you, Sister Riley. <laughs> she over there looking because she, she said, when I can get on this discussion, I can go on and on. And I do love teaching this. I timed that out, Sister Riley. Did I? No. So, so hey, so give give me my time. Give me my time, like you give, like like you have to teach your students. <laughs> you teach from bell. You teach from bell to bell. I'll ring the bell in a few minutes. <laughs> I I am gonna be brief though. All right. Look at verse four. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that they should will overtake you as a thief. So even though it's coming as a thief in the night, he said the saints, it's not something that's going to overtake who? The saints. One of the reasons is we're going to be caught up in the rapture. All right? You are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Darkness represents wickedness and sin. Okay? Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober well sleep here don't become don't be lethargic don't be apathetic my concern says a whole lot we could teach from this right here and i don't have time but my concern about the church of today is that overall we have an apathetic attitude i really wonder are we looking for the return of the lord are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are we living like Jesus is coming again? Or are we trying to gain as much of this world as we can? That's something to think about. That's why this subject needs to be preached and taught. Because we need something to shake us up. This is real, y'all. Can y'all say amen to that? All right. He said, but let us watch and be sober. But they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. He's not talking about from alcohol. He's talking about the cares of this life. 
but let us who are of the day be so we're putting on the breastplate of faith and love and and for a habit the hope of salvation so you ought to have your war clothes on because you're in a battle and the battle is for your soul because the devil intend to take every one of us out of here and so paul said put on your war clothes all right let's look at the last part of the lesson we and I told you I'm speeding it up so I can ring the bell for Sister Riley. Look at page 79. Look at, look at the verses here. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is he referring to there? For the Lord has not appointed us to wrath. What is he referring to there? That ought to be easy. All right, so Sister Riley said he has not appointed us to the tribulation. So that means what? You there at the point? I'm trying to get yourself a particular word. There you go. We will be raptured before that time comes. He said, for God has not appointed us to wrath. Now, if you look at Luke 21, and what is the 36? Let me read that for you. Jesus said here, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Talking about what? The tribulation period. If I'm saved, I am ready to be caught up in the rapture. I will not have to go through the wrath. You see, the tribulation period we, a lot of times people talk, think about what the Antichrist is going to do, and he's going to do some ruthless things. But let me tell y'all this. This is going to be a time where God's wrath is coming. That's going to be going to be really, really terrible. He has not appointed us to wrath, uh, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Aren't y'all glad that Jesus came and died for us? Whether we wake or sleep, that is, we are alive or we have died. We should live together with him. Paul goes again and says, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even also as ye do. Let me tell y'all something. This thing, and I'm saying this in my closing words. We're going to get our offer and get ready to go home. This thing is shaping up, you all, I think, more than what we really understand. You know, when they talk about the mark of the beast, Revelation chapter 13, in your hand or your forehead, that's what the Bible says, and you won't be able to buy or sell. You all do know the technology is already here, don't you? It's already here. Couple of things. This cryptocurrency, I'm not saying that the Antichrist is gonna use this, but it shows you the technology uh, is here because I've been reading reports here recently, the rest of the world, particularly China and Russia and Iran are trying to crash the American dollar. Why? Because the American dollar is what is used for the globe in order to determine the value of all the money around the world. If the dollar crash, guess what will happen to your money? The value is gonna drop like a rock. You know, it's going to be, you know, already, it's already has decreased. It's going to be much worse. So they want to get rid of the American dollar because if our wealth go out the window, then you will have to become more dependent on the government. And the government can have more control. And if the government get more control, then they're going to try their best to push the church around. That's what they want to do, you all. All right. The next thing is, if we get rid of the American dollar, we can get rid of the other currencies and maybe go to something like cryptocurrency, which again will allow the governments of the world or those people who are behind all of this to do what? To take charge, which if everything becomes chaotic later on with, with them making those changes, it makes it easy for the Antichrist to come up who's gonna to pretend to be a man of peace, who's gonna be very intelligent, who say, I got a way to solve the world's crisis. That's why I'm trying to tell you, this thing is shaping up. It is shaping up very fast. The other thing is, you got computer chips. 
Some places, they tell me already, they have put chips in and they go to work, they wave a hand. The chip is in there for the time clock. The chip is in there for them to receive their payment. All of this is taking place right now. So techno technology is something. I test drove a car in Jackson and, and passed around and got that kind of money, battle car like this, but I've test driving for somebody else. Got in the car, you wave your hand over this panel, the radio go up, wave it again and come down. You control the add heat, just wave across the panel. Don't even have to touch it. The technology is here. And we're fastly going in that direction. I say to you, uh, let's pray for this country. I'm gonna talk about this another time. Let's pray that the Supreme Court make the right decision about this thing about abortions because God is against abortion. It is the killing of the innocent. And the church need to be praying about this. This is a very important decision, but I wanna talk about that another time. I, I kinda wanna do a lesson a little different to show you some things behind some of this and what the devil is really trying to do. And, and all of this is an attack against the church. Because this discussion tonight, Satan does not like it. Because it's a warning to the church and it's also a warning to the world. All right, Sister Riley, the bell is ringing. I thank God for all of you that are here. I hope that we won't be on this uh, next week. We, we'll be dealing with something that's in first or second Thessalonians. Uh, keep study. I hope y'all got something out of these two lessons. I hope that you have. Okay. Hope that you've gotten something out of it. All right. We want to receive an offering. I'm going to, if you have an offer, just, just pass it, Sister Amy Lee. I'm going to go ahead and say our dismissal prayer and bless the offering uh, that we're going to receive. Look, Sunday is the Lord's Day. Say amen. Let's come and be present. I had a lot of people that were away for Mother's Day, so I hope all of those persons will be here on Sunday. And, and uh, let's just praise and magnify the Lord together on Sunday. You have an offering, uh, give it to... All right, give, give, give the... Uh, Give the uh, give my offices right while you're playing the phone. I'm gonna pray out this bit of prayer. God, we thank you, we honor you, and we thank you for all things. Thank you for the time of prayer, this very important discussion. I pray, Lord, that you will bless the offering that we're about to receive. Bless every giver, and every person with the heart. Take us out home safe and sound, and bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name, Amen. Those on on Facebook. You can share it all. We'd be glad to receive it. You can do it electronically. God bless you. We'll see you the next time.